Thank you for staying with us on the AM show. Now we get to the second belt of the conversation and as announced, we're talking about the now frosty relationship between Ghana and its neighbor, Burkina Faso. What caused this? Um, and now with the simmering tensions, what do we do moving forward? We have joining the conversation, Professor Kwesi Enning. Prof, a very good morning to you. It's been a while. I hope you've been keeping well. Oh, well, now that I'm an old man, I try to keep very well. I intend to grow old and happy see my great grandchildren and uh, you know contribute to generating knowledge so yeah, i'm really very well we thank god for that i don't know about old though every time i see you it seems you've grown a year younger but <laughs> i don't know what what it is that you do or what it is that you take but you must share those secrets before some of us get to where you are good Okay, so, I, I mean, I've heard you speak briefly on this matter over the weekend um, on, on this um, outburst, so to speak, of our president. I'll start from the standpoint of where this was said in Washington, D.C., as he met with other African leaders and the United States, and whether bringing this up was essential, was politically correct. Well, thank you very much. Um, the location, Washington. If you look at the setup of the meeting and the body language of the Ghanaian team, two things come out. One, that this was supposed to be a fairly closed bilateral meeting and that probably the Ghanaian team was not expecting that it will be recorded. Second is that when these statements were made by His Excellency the President, you could see from the body language of the Ghanaian team a sense of surprise um, and a bit of consternation. Uh, so this, although there were papers in front of His Excellency, I'm not if this was an off-the-cuff remark and a sense of concern. Uh, but whatever it is, the fact that this has come out um, creates quite some difficulties for Ghana with respect to our relations with Burkina Faso. But I want us to really take our time and disaggregate the sequencing of what he said about the Wagner Group, about mines, um, that the president of a sovereign nation had visited a bilateral partner, and the assertion that the fact that they are on our northern borders poses particular concerns. So if you would give me two or three minutes, I would like to disaggregate this step by step. Go ahead, Prof. First. I think the Bokinabi president has a right under all circumstances to visit Moscow and to seek for support. That is the legitimate right of a sovereign head of state who feels threatened, whose government has been under consistent pressure with almost 60% of his country under the control of jihadists. So that move to seek for external partners to bring cohesion to the response to the jihadist threat is legitimate under, under international praxis. The second was the assertion about Ghana's very bold, strong, consistent statements, both in the General Assembly and in the UN Security Council. If you look at the voting patterns, Ghana's voting pattern did not, you know, was not particularly exceptional because more than two thirds of other African states have consistently voted to condemn the uh, Russia. So there was really bringing that up in that meeting 
I'm sure Blinken and his team would wonder, you know, as to what was so exceptional and about uh, Let me make this point and make it clear. Mercenaries or private military companies have had a long history in international politics. Mercenaries, as we knew them until around 2000, 2005, when the nomenclature private military companies came into play, is that no mercenary group without an express invitation either by a sovereign government or by an opposition leader who seeks to undermine the incumbent has ever invaded a country. Right. Furthermore, the narratives around the Wagner group distorts the picture. How so? We know that, we know that the French Legion was even more violent and brutal than the Wagner group. So France has no right. France established the the French Legion, a dangerous mismatch of individuals from different countries to expound French foreign policy in dangerously vicious ways that the French state could not be aligned with. So Wagner is basically, and Mr. Putin, are basically following in the French footsteps. Furthermore, the role of Wagner in the last three to four weeks in Burkina Faso has been to target specific cells and specific concentrations of jihadist groups. That has led to some outflow, some of which I think we have seen in Ghana. Right. So the capacity of Wagner to deliver is very key. Being on the northern border is not a threat, a real threat to our security are the internal dynamics. Mm. You know, so we need to be careful not to distort where we need to place the emphasis of where our preparations must be. Our preparations must be building resilient communities, providing information, creating a sense of inclusion and equipping the frontline institutions, customs, which mm. please, all those institutions, then the army. We don't seem in Ghana to have a sense of agency when it comes to this situation. I've right. spent the past one week or so traveling probably close to 2,500 kilometers in the northern part of Ghana. Not once in any of the five regions was I stopped at any barrier. And those, those definitely are concerns. Uh, just, just hold for me briefly. Just hold for me briefly, Prof. Let me also take uh, the, the initial thoughts of Dr. Vladimir Enchidanso on, on this matter. Doc, can you hear me? Clear. Can you hear me, sir? I can hear you loud and clear. Great. I know you're pressed for time, so we'll do this very quickly so I can continue with uh, Prof as well. I'd like to find out from you, uh, fr from where we, we, we've come to meet this conversation, uh, would you say where our president mentioned it and how he mentioned it and whether this should have even come out as it has? Was, was it all put together a bad gaffe? Was this a political misstep? Well, in any case, the situation was bad. It was not at that forum that we should be mentioning this thing. And if uh, we were seriously worried about the presence of Wagner in Burkina, there could have been a quiet kind of diplomacy, a talk to Burkina for Burkina to assure us that uh, it, it, uh, they, don't, they wouldn't present any security threat to us or whatever it is. But to openly at that forum make it believe as if Burkina was wrong in the first place, bringing in Wagner. Wagner is Russian, and that they also pose a threat to us. And as if, as it were, we were begging the Americans to be on the standby to help us if Wagner, Wagner attacked. In any case, 
uh, international law wise or international relations wise, Wagner would not be in a position to attack Ghana in any way. There is not a narrator of uh, uh, suspicion that Wagner would have to be attacking Ghana. Wagner is a, a non uh, governmental organization, you know, it's a non state organization, a private organization, supported openly actually by Russia in any way, who are hired to, to, to fight wars, period. And Every country has a right to do such a thing. Because Blackwater was hired by the Americans, an American organization. We did all the dirty work in Iraq and, and Libya. And so Wagner being hired is no crime in international relations. They're there to help the government to fulfill its aim of territoriality and, you know, and engaging the jihadists. And so for our president to make this as if as it were we are under siege, was a little unfortunate, and you saw the reaction. Burkina recalled the ambassador from Ghana and also protested to our ambassador over there. And this thing shouldn't have come at all. In any case, I was personally against giving the 49 uh, uh, African delegation, I mean, the heads of delegation that attended the summit, which had no agenda. The only agenda is that, hey, Africa has come. Let me tell you what to do, where China and Russia are concerned. It's ridiculous, and that's why Kagame was very much uh, uh, and and angry. Mm. Uh, t t tell me, yes, right. So, so tell me, this this entire enterprise, from the picture that Professor Enning and you, uh, Professor Vladimir Inchidanso, have painted, uh, the Malians as a sovereign state have every right to do this. Was this then? A situation of what maybe uh, former President Mills said, uh, may his soul rest in peace, Zufiasem, especially as there's no real threat to us, though I hear there was a shooting at our border with Burkina Faso recently. Was that not enough to want to highlight the situation? Absolutely uh, not. The shooting, have we investigated, was it from Wagner? Obviously, there will be people who will be running away from the jihadists into Ghana, into uh, Niger into any other country nearby. And so if we see people running away, the, the uh, efflux of mi migrants that, that does not mean that it is Wagner which is doing that, that which is chasing them, you know. And yes, Mali has every right to import any other uh, organization to come help them. And Mali has thrown the, the French away just because they felt the French were not helping. So has Burkina Faso invited the Wagner group, group also. Central African Republic invited them. So we didn't have to make a deal out of the whole thing. Yes, the UFSM, the contexts are different. And I think we were not happy with uh, President Mills because in international law, we say pacta sub servanda. Once you signed a pact uh, or an agreement, it to its tenancy, obey. He was in Abuja to sign the declaration that enjoined us to mobilize troops for uh, Côte d'Ivoire. And you come back and you say, ask for me, I'm not uh, mobilizing. That, that, is, that is bad. That, that context was completely uh, bad. You can't say Dufias in any way. But the Dufias um, can be a principle for, for uh, foreign policy. America has been there before. When, before 1945, they had this principle of isolation. I mean, they didn't want to interfere in global affairs. It was part of their principle. And even in 1918, when... Uh, the League of Nations was being formed. It was their president who brought the 14 points. But when he went back, they told him that, look, we don't want to be meddling in global affairs. So that kind of GCSM policy is always there for uh, countries to, to emulate. But today, Americans have this containment policy since the Cold War, and it's not ended. They want to contain China and Russia in Africa. And we are gleefully happy to be part of that containment policy. That is what worries some of us. Are, are you That's suggesting what? we're being used as pawns? Exactly. Exactly. By so, last so, year, so, so there's a major chess that. game going on between the world powers or superpowers, and we are caught there mm -hmm. as, as a pawn. That's what you're saying. We are not caught there. We are even being used. We are telling us what to do. Look at the theme of this year's uh, summit. The theme was clear. Containing China and Russia in Africa. You know... But I thought what we'll be doing and what I was expecting of our president and any other president is this, that can we be the light of Africa to, to let Africa play its role in global politics 
we have brought in the AFTA, the Africa Free Trade Area. Africa Free Trade Area, right. Which is an organization that would make Africa one. What Nkoma emphasis, our Pan Africanist uh, Trevor, who is taking the mantle? One Africa, one foreign policy, one those policies that will make Africa Africa, an African bank, etc., etc. Now, as a customs union, can we now talk as one instead of 49 African leaders going to sit before Biden and Biden promises 2.5 billion so that we don't find manufacture uh, fertilizers, 35 billion so that we will be fighting jihadists, right? And things like that. I mean, come on. When will somebody think this pan Africanist uh, uh, agenda and tell the world that we Africans, we don't want, like Nkoma said, no testing of bombs in Africa? And we went on that tangent until France, France stopped testing bombs, uh, atomic bombs in, in, in southern Algeria. Mm. Can we, can somebody take, can Ghana just look into the, into the face of the Bidens and tell them what Africa wants or what Africa needs instead of them telling us what we need? And what they also want us to do. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, something I just don't understand. Mm. Today I was listening to uh, this, the former AU uh, representative at the UN, uh, Mrs. Kwao. And she was forthright. She was saying that, look, we are, they continue to use us as part of their agenda setting. Why can't we set the agenda? And we meet them. There's China Africa Forum. There's China uh, France Africa Forum. There is Turkey Africa Forum. There is a uh, uh, US Africa Forum. Why can't we tell them what we need and what we want them to do? If they can't do it, bye bye and that kind of thing. But we always go and we are like begging them. You see, we need that. We need that. And right. can you help us? And then they will tell you, stop China. You know, it's a it's a game being played. And right now, the game rules have changed. It right. is trade. Trade is not the current political economy of the world is trade in news, and China is playing it very well. Mm. Last year, they invested 269 billion in Africa alone, whilst America invested only 64 billion. You know, now they tell you Chinese investment is wrong because uh, human rights are not part of it. Democracy is not part of it. Whose values? In, 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 in interesting, interesting dynamics you bring to bear. But, but right before I go to uh, Professor Edding and, and let go of you, uh, because, again, you are pressed for time, I'd just like to find out from you. You mentioned Nkrumah and what he did in, during his time. No testing of bombs and all of that. We, we started the non-aligned movement. We, 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 we've gone on a tangent of neutrality for, for a large portion of our national life. Uh, sure. Has this been compromised now with what our president has done? If you look at the response from the Burkinabe authorities, they say Ghana could have undertaken exchanges with the Burkinabe authorities on the security issue in order to have the right information. Have we shot ourselves in the foot? Well, I, in the initial, my initial statement, I just said so, that we could have gone on the quiet diplomacy to, to wow. see what the problem is in Burkina Faso and we could have negotiated whatever it is if we have security concerns. But we didn't do that, and we went, in uh, one way or the other, I think I will agree with you, we went, bam, 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 to show the whole world that America, we are with you, so kind of. And, and that's bad. It's in bad state. Our neutrality somehow seems to be compromised, one way or the other, by our pledge to the Americans, how we will go with you, no matter what, and kind of, and you to do this for us. What steps we, then, in, in some 30 seconds, what steps then do we do to remedy the situation? No, the point is, is that I think it was a gap. And such situations, if it becomes permanent, if every step we take, tomorrow we sign an agreement with them, buying their arms and ammunition, tomorrow there is a, a contingent from the U.S. Army doing this, and there's, if, if there is some permanency, then it will be seen that, oh, fine, we have completely... And, and you know, international relations is a little fluid. Uh, the, the, it's not the case that we're going to go on this tangent forever. There may come a government who doesn't want to do anything with the U.S., Right. They may come a government who want to do everything with the Chinese and that. So this, the fluidity of foreign uh, policy in terms of needs and wants will show where your, 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 your lines are going. So I don't think this is the end of our relationship with the rest of the world.
Prof, we're grateful uh, for your yep, time. Yep. Professor Vladimir Infidansu is an international relations expert. Professor Edding, um, hello, Prof. Yes, hello. Yes, I'm here. Great. Uh, take, taking off from where uh, your colleague just left us, what do you think this does for us? We, we all accept it was in poor taste what happened, but does this compromise our neutrality, like he says? And moving forward, what remedial measures can we bring to bear now that the Burkinabi authorities have recalled their ambassador to us and our ambassador has been summoned? I mean, this will be international relations processes that will be triggered. What do we sure. do to set ourselves back in a positive light with our neighbor? Well, I think <coughs> there's been quite a long-term um, weakening of Ghana's international position. I mean, if you remember when Ghana held the chair of ECOWAS, there were three coup d'etats during that period and a couple of failed coup attempts. Not only that, I think ECOWAS was meeting in Accra and the collective intelligence chiefs of ECOWAS could not prompt their leaders in Accra that there was something happening in Burkina Faso. And the subsequent problem that Burkina faced, ECOWAS has never been able to do anything. Actually, the last time ECOWAS' delegation went to Burkina, they were hooted at. So the Burkinabis and also the Malians feel that they have been left in the ledge uh, by, their, by their compatriots. And therein lies this issue of neutrality and Ghana's role thereof. The suspicions that have arisen among several ECOWAS countries because of this tip. And I think it would be very nice to find out whether it ought to have been recorded or not, is that we are perceived, particularly by quite a number of the Francophone countries, that we are not a trusted partner. And it comes to undermine the Accra Initiative of which Burkina Faso is a key player. The Accra, the Accra Initiative in which a major conference was held in Accra about three weeks ago, seeks to share information and to build trust and confidence amongst the West African states, probably five or six of them. So for the originator of the initiative, mm. to undermine a critical partner in that initiative, privately during an international conversation, raises questions of trust. You're saying that President okay. Akufuado, by bringing this up as the originator of the Accra initiative, was undermining his own initiative. That's what you're saying. Dramatically. Okay. And I think we need to ask ourselves, who has been the real driver behind the Accra initiative? And I think it is this individual, Kandapa, who must be emboldened and given the mandate to use backdoor channels to recreate trust. But it's not going to be it's not going to be easy at all. Because the Bokinabis will be seeking assurances and reassurances that we are not using Ghana as a staging post A to watch what they are doing, B to continue to undermine them. Because the French will be very happy concerning this thing. And I think we should be very careful, as uh, Vladimir was saying, that we don't put ourselves in a position where we satisfy other national interests, but our own medium to long-term national interests are undermined. But this is a dangerous game that we are playing, and we need Mr. Kandapas mature, firm, stable hand uh, to try to uh, recreate the trust and the openness amongst the partners of the Accra Initiative. So we need the National Security <laughs> Minister to come in here to intervene, basically. Yes. He has the maturity, he has the style, he has the 
self-effacedness. He has the networks that he has built over time uh, based on trust. Um, and I think he is the best person to, to really lead this backdoor initiative of recreating trust. Well, our only hope is that in the end, we'll be able to restore that trust, especially where we find ourselves in the sub-region, and uh, forge ahead in union, uh, because some of these countries are far away, but we have neighbors right next door, and uh, we, we don't look forward to any consequences. Prof, we're grateful for your time, and it's actually refreshing to have spoken to you after so long once more. Merry Christmas in advance. A very Merry Christmas to you. All right. Thank you. And that is uh, Professor Kwesi Ening as well. So Professor Vladimir Chidans was spoken to earlier and uh, Professor Kwesi Ening, both of them sharing their thoughts on this matter. But tellingly, uh, the last bit, Ekufuado's actions undermine Accra Initiative. That is what Professor Kwesi Ening uh, was saying. Before we take a break and return with some more action on the AM show, we all know water is life. It regulates your body temperature and keeps you alive and kicking. Awake is premium purified water treated through a strict purification process to ensure that every bottle on the market refreshes you better. We have the perfect sizes for all occasions, 330 ml, 500 ml bottles to fit your pockets and bags, 750 ml for the heavy drinkers and 1.5 liters for those who always want more. We have also introduced our special 19 liter jars for offices and homes. Now you just need to stay awake with Awake Purified Drinking Water wherever you go. So come on, grab a bottle of Awake Water and get quality hydration. Awake Purified Drinking Water, one for life. Remember, for every bottle you purchase, an amount is donated to the National Cardiothoracic Center. It's produced by Casa Preco. For bulk purchases, please call 0262-351-251. This advert is FDA approved. And at this juncture, I do have to reach out for my awake drinking water. We'll be right back after the break. <laughs> 